what's going on friends and family? My name is Skylint, and I think we can all agree that this year we saw a lot of early access games hit the ground running. So I'm going to do a top 10 list for the best early access games that are out yet. Now these games to qualify for this list need to have hit early access in 2017. Also, they need to have not been released yet. So sadly, we're gonna have to omit some early access games that aren't out yet, but they're kind of older. This list is for the rising stars that we can't wait to see finished next year or like, you know, whenever they come out. But regardless, they're actually really really fun to buy into right now. So if you're looking for my vote for like the best and newest early access games, then this is going to be it. My top 10 new early access games that are just not out yet. Okay, friends, the first game I want to talk about is a space for X titled Endless Space 2. This is part of the Endless series of games. So all the lore is going to connect. The UI is going to be very comfortable and similar. And a lot of the mechanics are just going to kind of flow if you played the other games. However, I played Endless Legend the most. I do like Dungeon of the Endless, but it's a totally different game. It's not even a 4X. It's a, a totally just, it's a different thing. Endless Space 2, though, is a proper 4X, and it's also the successor to Endless Space 1. There's some differences, obviously, uh, but in the end, I think this is a really neato game. Now, I'm definitely floundering. I don't know if you guys are going to be watching my first impression on this, which I'm going to be uploading soon, but basically it's like way over my head. There's a lot of stuff that's just going on, and that's kind of the appeal of these games. Like, these games are all about learning and experimentation, and it's not just jumping in, you know, it's not like dogfighting in space or anything like that. You happen to be in space, but it's about colonizing these different different star systems and there's like the all these different kind of like civilizations and they all play very differently so yeah uh to compare it it is like civilization but it's about space uh this is probably going to be one of the better if not the best space 4x so yeah buy into it now check it out and also uh, you probably just missed the uh, free weekend but that just happened hopefully you played it and hopefully you had fun Next up on the list, we have Conan Exiles, which is probably going to be one of those like B games. Like, you know, it didn't have a huge production value. It doesn't have a, a huge amount of money thrown into it. And it's a lot of reused ideas from other survival server games. But dude, it's just like not bad. OK, it's a really silly gimmicky game that came out uh, this year. Well, early access. And I think a lot of people had fun with it. A lot of YouTubers were just jamming on it. A lot. A lot of kids were jumping on it. OK, I don't know if kids were playing this game, but there's a little bit of nudity. So watch out for that, guys. Anyways, Conan Exiles is just like a really grotesque, really just like in your face, very comical, I think, a survival server game, which is, I think, something that we needed. It, it's something that almost like parodies the genre while at the same time just like, oh, kind of taking itself maybe a little bit too seriously. So that's probably why it has mixed reviews. But in the end, I thought it's a cool addition to early access games this year. Coming in at number eight on our list, we have an adorably awesome game. I love the art from Clay. I love all, is it Clay or Clay? Regardless, dude, Oxygen not included. Probably look at it first glance and, and ask, is that Fallout Shelter? Think of Fallout Shelter, except instead of just being macro management, you can actually more deeply micromanage all of the little simulation stuff. So you dig and build inside of an asteroid base and all sorts of like sciencey stuff. Man, let's do a science. And uh, yeah, it, it's a management game. Okay, but it's, it's cute, it's adorable, and it's a little bit morbid in some cases, but that may Maybe can debatably be compared to Fallout Shelter, a mobile game. I think there's actually a lot of charm and a lot more depth than First Meets the Eye with Oxygen Not Included. Next up on our list, we have Quake Champions. Now, honestly, it's so low on the list because this game needs to run like perfectly before it can really be considered proper done. Like it needs to have better net code than it currently has. And also it's a pretty steep buy-in with $30, but you can, whenever it does release, it will be a free to play game. You can jump in, the renting is super fair, all that good stuff. But just keep in mind, it is an arena shooter first before hero shooter. So if you compare it to something like Lawbreakers, which try to call itself an arena shooter, no, 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 no. Quake is still absolutely Quake. It's just no longer just quake you do have some really cool champions one can like run through a hallway and insta give people one can go invisible and jump off walls and you know some are faster some are slower you can play doom guy and punch the crap out of people it's pretty fun it's ridiculous but you're still going to be running around the map getting the big health getting big armor you know picking up rocket launcher sniper rifles and you're still going to be having those arena mechanics you know that that quake gameplay it's just now additive with the champions but again though there are some issues it's still obviously early access and more so than a lot of these games it's just like we expect a lot more from this game, so that's why I have it so low. Because you probably want to wait until it's truly competitive at that competitive state before you, you know, compete in a competitive game. Next up on the list that I am so glad that I get to talk about finally is a game called Foxhole. Now, I did a very poor first impressions on this game, and I've been trying to mention this on any forum post I possibly can on any video. I'm just like, guys, why aren't more people talking about this game? It's really unique. It's really good. So this is a top-down shooter 
MMO. And uh, debatably, there has been like two of those before, like Realm of the Mad God, maybe. Uh, but Foxhole is going to be set uh, in a historical period, a historical kind of more authentic ish. And it's still a very arcade game, obviously being top down, but it's trying to go for more of a hardcore, more niche approach when it comes to like historical battles. Like it's obviously no planet side, but you can actually relate it a little bit. Like it is a, a shooter MMO that focuses on just jumping in, getting in with a group of people and then going and doing your own player made missions. So there's no questing, there's no raiding unless you count, you know, raiding enemy bases. It's just PVP. It's just shooting up, you know, good fun. But moving on, we have a more lighthearted game called Astroneer. This is a title that I think you saw a lot of big YouTubers playing because it's just one of those games that just looks gorgeous and it's just so instantaneously fun and adorable and kind of charming. But this is probably to be likened to something like Minecraft in space. You do like mine uh, and instead of being voxeled, it's more polygonal. <laughs> it's more it's more polygonal. I really adore the uh, art style of this game and I think it's just one of those awesome co-op games and I would love it even though it is an early access. I would love it if they sold co-op packs. I think more games should really do that because I feel like Astroneer is one of those games that you just got to play with friends. You got to co-op together. You got to build together. You got to survive together. And I think that's just it, that's really the charm to this game. So if you do buy this, try to play with a friend and that's all I can suggest. I think it's a game that uh, you know tons of YouTubers have done videos on it. If you guys want to go check those out and get a feel for the game before you jump in early, but I think it's probably uh, worth jumping into now. Next up, we have Dauntless. So this is going to be a game that's not on Steam, but it did go early access. And I don't know it, what you count as early access, but you can buy into Dauntless early. And so that's kind of what I'm considering as early access. If you can just buy into it and you can play it early, then that really makes it no different than Steam early access. So yeah, Dauntless, you can get a founder pack, you can play right now and you can jam to it and have fun. Obviously, it's not a complete game. It's a game that's going to be added on to for quite a while, especially being a free to play game. We're going to constantly, consistently get new monsters to beat the crap out of and I can't wait for that new weapons and things to craft awesome stuff So this is basically gonna be monster hunter, but free to play That's really what it is And I, I really like the clean cartoon art style and I think it's gonna make the game uh, quite timeless and probably run a lot better on a lot more Machines than the upcoming monster hunter world plus the fact that it's free to play but basically guys Yeah, that's the gimmick It's a free to play monster hunter and whether you want to buy early into a free to play game or not I don't know that that's that's up to you But regardless, this is a cool game that I think its idea its concept is original enough to support now, jump in early, and have a blast. Hey friends, let's talk about Dead Cells. Now, I was really excited to talk about that, and Dead Cells is one of the games that really inspired this list. But basically, Dead Cells came out around a similar time when like a lot of other games were just becoming known as like, you know, Souls-like or Metroidvanias and a lot of roguelites. And Dead Cells just kind of combined all of those buzzwords and those buzz mechanics, and that's what it is. And it's doing it really well. I actually put it on my top 10 pixel art list as well, though it does some trickery. It's kind of, it kind of is, is cheating its pixel art, but regardless, that's another topic for another day. Dead Cells uh, and everything else doesn't feel cheap or cheating. It, it really is like a gorgeous game, gorgeous, colorful uh, aesthetic. I like it a lot. Uh, and its gameplay mechanics definitely are slower paced. When roguelites are generally like super, super fast compared to rogue likes, which are turn based, um, it's really cool to have one that's kind of in between. That's still, you know, souls like, and that it's slower paced, and it's, it has more RPG mechanics, and it's more about the exploration. Um, but it's still yeah, a rogue light, and it still is a Metroidvania, and at the same time, it has souls like inspiration. So all that combined at pretty even level. Levels, and I think it's unique, special, and worth looking into. Number two on the list is going to be a game you knew would be on this list somewhere, probably higher, and that's going to be PUPG PUBG Player Unknown Battlegrounds, the battle royale game that has taken the world, the globe, by storm. I think a lot of people are having fun with this title. It is more of a simulator kind of game. I mean, it's definitely arcade in some instances, but it's more of a sincere approach to Battle Royale. Like, there's going to be a lot of complexities with the gear that you can actually equip and customize uh, throughout the match. There is a lot of intricacies with the physics of the game as well. It's definitely not arcade uh, when it comes to the whole genre. Like H1Z1 is more of an arcade Battle Royale, and then PUBG is probably more similar to Arma, which is definitely where Player Unknown has his roots from, making like one of the original mods, at least one of the better ones. Moving on, helping with H1Z1, but he took his ideas, distilled them, and then uh, kind of uh, unraveled them with PUBG and as we can see that we're getting vaulting we're getting a lot of other things adding to the complexity to PUBG so that's kind of the direction that they want to go in more intricacies and I don't think that any other battle royale game that tries to be as intricate or sincere as PUBG is going to work at all 
Now, real quickly, I normally don't do this, but maybe I will since you guys have been supporting me so much with these. I'll go ahead and give some honorable mentions. First up, we have a game called Northgard, which I just did a first impression for. This is going to be a strategy game that plays in real time as you build up your base and you're fighting all these other civilization or their clans, exactly. So you do have interesting clans and interesting ways to play the game, differentiating uh, sort of uh, strategies with like if you want to focus on economy or warring. And there is a fantastic or literally fantasy uh, PVE element to the game as well. Well, I think this is probably a really interesting and good introduction for noobs to the genre, so I definitely would have to give it a recommend even in its early access state. Next up in honorable mentions, I have a game called Witchet, which I just actually used as gameplay in one of my newest news videos. Also, I do have a first impression with webcam and everything where you can just see how animated I get playing this game for the first time. It's fun, it's great, and I'm actually glad that there are people consistently playing the game on the servers. Basically though, it's prop hunt, but with witches and hunters. We have cool like gadgets like grappling hooks, and you got cool spells that you can use like flying around, zipping, zooming on, you know, umbrellas. I said umbrellas, but I meant, I meant brooms. On brooms, and I don't know, just a lot of really cool silly stuff a very interesting and engaging maps as well and as far as prop hunts go i played a lot on a different uh, you know servers of like minecraft or you also have gmod there's other ways to get your prop hunt fix on but i think witchet is the single most legitimate uh, individual game and lastly, for honorable mentions, we have Tannenberg, which is going to be the newest recruit for Early Access. It literally, just like the other day, came out on Early Access. So for, yeah, 18 bucks, you get a uh, really hardcore, authentic uh, First World War FPS. So it's going to be 64 players, big team battle game, and it's really going to be focused on that, like, you know, boots on the ground, that sort of, like, visceral, in-your-face, that dirty, gritty type of gameplay, which, you know, again, World War One and the mechanics that are going to be involved in that, a little bit slower pace at the same time. I know it's going to be niche. It's not going to reach every Everybody, but this is a very particular game and I don't I don't think Battlefield 1 is going to really mesh with the the history crowd and mesh with the you know people who really want authentic gameplay so yes this is less arcade it's not gonna appeal to everyone but at the same time it's focusing on that niche and it looks like it's delivering and our number one is going to be Fortnite Battle Royale. Now it's kind of cheating because there's actually two early access Fortnites. You can buy into the Save the World, which is like the co-op horde survival building sort of uh, game that you can do. But Fortnite also has Battle Royale, which is like a different thing. And that's free. That's free early access. You play right now, even on PS4 and jam to it. Now it's number one because it directly competes with PUBG in a couple of ways, even though they're very different games. One is a simulation Battle Royale game and one is an arcade Battle Royale game. Fortnite is extremely arcade, very silly, very comical from its art style all the way to its literal mechanics. But in terms of the battle royale, Fortnite just kind of has more in ways and less is more as in like the graphics are more simplified so it's easier to spot people its weapon mechanics are simplified but it adds building mechanics so it's really more about creativity it's really like emphasizes positioning and it's way less campy oriented so the actual gameplay feels much better also the fact that its netcode actually freaking works its hitboxes are seemingly legitimate and the overall feel of the game much less how it's designed but just like how it's produced is freaking good as an early access game this came out of nowhere and it just feels great it works great it's just a you know honestly it could just be a full release like you really can't tell based on polish like it's a triple a game already that's what it feels like it's good to go anyways guys that's kind of the end of the list hopefully you enjoyed the honorable mentions and just enjoy every game that i mentioned period on this video that's like the point i want to share cool stuff with you yeah and play them with you too so yeah check that out over at twitch.tv slash skyland i will be playing that and join our discord if you want to actually look for group and join us all playing together i think there should be some good stuff right and hopefully you think what i have to say yeah, any of these games are some good stuffs too i mean that's like what we're doing here we're just trying to share experiences all together so if you want to support that you can actually go check out the Patreon there, and that's going to allow me to play and buy more of these games and share that with you. Thanks so much, and I do want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much to the donators, the people who like, subscribe, and actually share the videos, and to people who are supporting me directly through Patreon. And you know what? Just I just want to say thanks to all the eyeballs that decided to give this video a look. Thank you, and keep the hype alive, guys. My name's Skylint, and I'll see you again next time.